Good morning, Your Honor. May it please the Court. Cynthia Pepin, Assistant District Attorney for the Northwestern District for the Commonwealth. The Commonwealth is before this Court today on its petition for extraordinary relief pursuant to Chapter 211, Section 3. Uh, the Commonwealth seeks reversal of the decision of the motion judge, um, Judge David Ross, the presiding judge in the Orange District Court, who was sitting for this case in the Greenfield District Court, uh, in which the judge um, ordered, uh, after the Commonwealth had filed a motion in limine to allow um, evidence of a defendant's breath test results into evidence, um, he made a ruling um, ordering only the lower of the two results is into there, evidence. Is there an administ I'm sorry, go ahead. Well, I, I just wanted to get the big picture here because this must be something going on all over the, the state whenever someone is charged with operating under. And, and I just, I confess my ignorance. Do they always give two blood test results? Your Honor, thank you. We, just to, to give a little bit of background, the implied consent report form um, has the defendant giving two blood test results, and that's by statute. Chapter 9024K states that a, um, a result, a breath test result, is valid only if there are two result, two breath tests, one breath test, a calibration test, and then a second breath test. Um, 90, 20, 24, as the court knows, uh, 24.1e states that um, evidence of a, of a blood alcohol level as shown by a blood test or a breath test shall be admissible in an OUI case to, uh, to show a defendant's um, whether a defendant is um, intoxicated. So in every case, there, there are actually two results. Absolutely, Your Honor. In every case, there are two results. 9024K states that, and then the regulations that are promulgated pursuant to 9024K by the Department of Public Safety states that there will be two tests with a calibration test but in can, the can middle. Can I ask you this question? Uh, you're not, I'm sorry, Justice, I'm going and, and are they both your blood alcohol content? Yes, Your Honor. They're both, they're, they're both a, re a reading from the in, in tox, uh, intoximeter um, and, the, and a calibration in the center. Why does now, the calibration come in the middle? Isn't calibration, uh, aren't I right? Am I, am I right? Calibration is to make sure the machine is working properly. Yes. Why does calibration come in the middle? Why doesn't it come first? Well, the regulations say, there, first there's an air blank No, test. no, the statute says you have to do one, two, three. And yes. This is very important what the statute, right. what the regulation says. Right. And why doesn't the calibration come first? Why is the first test any good at all if there's been no calibration? Well, there's an air blank test, and that would show that there's nothing else going on. Is um, an air blank test first? First. Then there's the first test. Then there's, there's the first test. Where then does the it calibration. Talk about the, where does the, where is there a provision about the air blank test? Uh, I, Your Honor, I don't believe it's in the in the regulation, but that certainly is. I a didn't see standard. it, and I know I prosecuted a million OUI cases myself, and it was always, a, a, I guess, an ear blank test, yes. or a, and then yes. the test. But I don't understand why the calibration comes in the middle. And it, we didn't get an amicus brief from DPS, and I'm very curious. It's part of the statute, isn't it? Yeah, I the know statute, it is, but I'm. Yes. But I know, but I'm, I'm asking why? Why wouldn't the calibration come first? Well, I, you know, I, I could, I, I would expect that they, they, it may be that if it's in the center, then that would show really that both tests, that if it's in the center, it shows one test and then it's still working, the machine is still proper, and then the second. So if you have it at the beginning, then there would be, by the second test, perhaps oh. more problem, oh, more right, room for error. Right. Then I have an admin, I, I wonder whether this isn't an administrative law issue. The DPS may have exceeded its authority by saying that only the lower test is admissible. Where are they authorized to? You don't argue this in your brief, but well, haven't they exceeded their authority in their regulation? We don't, I, I, the position of the Commonwealth is not that they've exceeded because we feel that, the, that their regulation is consistent, that, that we read the regulation as saying they may designate the, the lower number, when, and sometimes the number is the same. It could be a 0 .08 and a 0 .08 or a .09 and a .09, but if, if there are two, they, they are designating, it's giving the benefit of the doubt to the defendant. But, but and that who, can, authorized, who authorized the Commissioner of Public Safety to make that judgment? That, that would only be by... Benefit, and, even, and the same with truncating, right. although you don't well, even raise truncating right. in this case. But I, I see this as totally a case of where the um, 
department has exceeded its, its authority here by. But you, you, you have to, it seems to me, well, it's an administrative issue, but it seems to me it's not unreasonable to have the department that's being delegated this authority to figure out a way to resolve conflicts. If you had, for example, a .07 and a .08, mm -hmm. what are you going to do? Right. Do and you there prosecute or don't you? I but think isn't it's that just a decision that the legislature should make not it, I mean it hasn't been it could it could be delegated but I don't see where in the statute they delegated it to the commission. And certainly if the legislature had delegated that then we the commonwealth would not be here. Right. But here we're saying they can the given that the Department of Public Safety has delegated the lower number or to be the blood alcohol Designated. number that's one thing but we would still say and there are a number of reasons for that you have to at some point perhaps get to a number because you may have a suspension. A there are issues about suspension of a license. You have to have some number to determine if a defendant's license is suspended. If he's a minor, that is as low as it it's a .02. So you have to have some number be designated. But the Commonwealth's position is just because that lower number is designated, and it could have been the higher number, or it could have been, as in, in, in Maine, they actually designate that you will take a, the average of the two numbers. That, that, that could have been a, how they worked a, it. It's a, it's a it's a way to administer the system yes in a, you know in a fair and reasonable way your point is that's fine for those purposes when I'm at trial right that's a different issue right and, and and our position is still that the Commonwealth is proceeding here in a case of a 0.09 and a 0.10 or we it could have been a 0.08 and a 0.09 we would still be proceeding and acknowledge that uh, the regulation states that the lower number is the blood alcohol level. Our position is that the implied consent report form shows compliance with the statute, compliance with the regulation, that the Commonwealth should be, ought to be able to get into evidence but, both test results. But isn't that, it just seems to me that's totally, it would be totally confusing for a jury because they're told that the only thing you should look at is the blood alcohol content. That's what the statute says. And the commissioners designated that the blood alcohol content is the .09 in this case. Uh, but we're just giving you this point one. What are they supposed to do with that? Well, I think that I, I don't. I, well, can't they just use it like they use the evidence that his speech was slurred, his eyes were glassy? It's other evidence. Yes, I don't think that it's that confusing for the jury. And I think that the jury, we assume, is going to be rather sophisticated. And they, and they have to make determinations of whether the machine is reliable. And the fact that there are one test and then a calibration and then a second test all goes to the issue of reliability. It, you know, it also, so I, I think it, it, it really... Why isn't it confusing? We're going to give you two numbers. Now, let me tell you that the, the lower number is the one, the that, one that you should take as the blood alcohol level. Mm -hmm. But we're going to give you two. Mm -hmm. Well... Oh, okay, so what are we supposed to do with the other one? How is it relevant? To well, I think that they can see that, they're, that, the, te that the, the numbers are pretty close, but yet one is a little higher, so they're not going to have, perhaps if, if they have, if there's some doubt, well, gee, maybe... Maybe he's a .08, but maybe it's really more like he was close to a .07. Then there, this is some information that corroborates the .08, but indicates no, he's he's actually he's actually not close to that line. And but, but that's asking the jury to perform a function that they're not they're not competent to perform. They're speculating. Well, they, they don't understand. I mean, what's the basis for saying well it might be closer to a .10 than a .08? Well. First of all, there, there is the, fa the factor of, and, and this is by regulation, that the numbers are always truncated. So, in fact, in this case, the defendant actually, his actual level was a .098 and then a .109. So he was really closer, uh, closer to a, a totally higher number. So there's the but truncation without any, issue. But without any expert ex explaining mm -hmm. the difference, mm -hmm. you know, why there is a difference, mm -hmm. how is a jury to decide which one to use if there are two given to them. Well, I think the fact is, Your Honor, that they, they would be instructed to use the lower number, but the, the higher number, just as if they, if, if they have a... What's the, what's the purpose of giving it to the jury? I thought at least the, the defendant argues that the purpose uh, was ostensibly to show that the test was valid. Yes, that, that is the primary why, why purpose. Why would giving the jury two numbers plus a calibration? I mean, if you, if you have... The, the, uh, an operator testifying that he was certified, I mean, these are the questions in the brief. The machine was certified as da, 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 the test was conducted according to methodology. Two breath samples were provided along with calibration, and the operator can testify that the number designated as the subject's blood. 
Why isn't that enough? And what are you asking the jury to do? Well, we're asking the jury to be able to see the implied consent report form that would indicate all of the, the results, the point on, the, both, both breath test results and the calibration. And then they, they can look at that for themselves. And they will, they, I, I believe that a jury, you know, it, their responsibility is to decide <clears> if, the, if they determine that the test or that the machine is reliable. And so that is information that they should be able to have. Just as if, if, if the test were the same, if the results were a 0 .08, 0 .15, and a 0 .08, they should still be able to look at that implied consent report does form. The, does the, are you suggesting that, let's assume that you get in the, the, 0 .08 the or the 0 .09 and the 0 .10 here, are, is the prosecutor permitted to argue to the jury that look at this, this is a 0 .09 and there's also a 0 .10 and that shows that he really had a pretty, you know, he was well into the statutory amount? Well, can the prosecutor use that second number as argument? The, the prosecutor, the, the regulation states that the, and, and the prosecutor will assume that the blood alcohol level is a 0.08. But I think that he can go into the, the fact of the reliability of the test if it becomes an issue. Certainly if, the, if a defendant wishes to stipulate to what the, what the test result is, that, that, that's one issue. But, but of course, in any case, the Commonwealth can bring forth all its evidence, just like when you have experts, a, a defendant can stipulate but, but I'm just to the... To, I'm just trying to wonder, um, because if you're suggesting that the reason why the Commonwealth wants this, put, put aside reliability. Let's just say the defendant stipulates the test was reliable, but all I want in is the .09. But of course, the Commonwealth doesn't right. have to stick with the stipulation. But why would you not stick with the stipulation other than you want to be able to use that .10? And I don't think you can do that. Well, that, that would be one reason. We would submit that that is, that, is, that is information about the defendant's blood alcohol level. But you don't have um, an expert. The, the other, <clears throat> and then the other thing, Your Honor, is sometimes um, a defendant will seek an expert and will challenge the result. If he, you know, you've got a point away, and then, and we have this happen on many occasions where he'll have a, an expert will be brought in to, to then say, well, it's variable by about 10 percent, and then you are immediately getting the jury into an issue where they're they're asked to to, to consider that the different. That's a different question. I mean, it may well be that you, you you know, no holds barred when that happens. But if you just have a case, no expert case, I'm just I'm still not clear what the jury is supposed to do with that other number. If if other than the reliability issue. We would say it would be f for corroboration. Also, corroboration Your Honor. Corroboration of what? Corroboration of the first, the first number. So that the, def the jury knows that there are two tests. And if they only know the result is point away, then they're left to wonder what would be, what is, the, what is that second result? They could wonder if it's, if it's actually lower. Well, but if they the see the full is the decision to admit the evidence within the judge's discretion? The Commonwealth would submit that that, that, that is wrong, that it is not within the judge's discretion. And th this judge, Why? Judge Ross. Why? Well, we would say in, in this particular case, he said that within his discretion, he could, that it could come in if it were to benefit the defendant's theory of the case. And, and we would submit that that is arbitrary. Is the, but normally, the admission of evidence is within the judge's discretion. Well, there might be, there, there's a, a, a gatekeeper issue in, in terms of if the regulations hadn't been followed, then the, then the judge could determine that the evidence should not no be admitted. there's no challenge here to the... Whether, no, there's so, no challenge. So put and that so, aside. So is the admission of evidence within the judge's discretion? No, because the, the Commonwealth has... It, it's, it's within the, the, the Commonwealth's duty to present the evidence to the jury, and this is evidence that it wishes to bring, to bring forth. So, so, so if you have... Is 0.08 the, the, the cutoff between the gray zone and, and you can rely on just the... If it's above a 0.08... You can you can convict just on the breathalyzer alone. Well, that's the per se. The, yeah, is the that per the, se is point oh eight. Yes. So what if you get a point oh seven and a point oh nine? How does the judge instruct? The, in a point oh seven, the Commonwealth would no not proceed on the point oh eight. Can you and tell me what calibration means exactly? You don't. No one explains it in their brief. Well, calibration. There there is a um, simulator solution or that that's tested. Um, and the and the level of alcohol in that is 0.15 percent, and so then when the machine actually tests that that, that solution in that it should come up with 1.5. 
in that bottle, and it should be a 0.15 or a 0.14 or 0.16 because the alcohol can, can dissipate. But, but if, that, if it's tested and it, and it comes within that level, then we know that the machine is working properly on a known, known and sample. And that's done between the two tests by yes. statute. Yes. Wouldn't it have been helpful if someone in the brief described what calibration was, the process you just described? In retrospect, Your Honor, yes, it, would don't. Be, it would be helpful. Can, can, I, can I move to a slightly different point? Let's assume for a Please. moment that these regulations are the statute. We consider regulations as we would laws. Mm -hmm. uh, would your position be the same, that whenever there are two results, the Commonwealth has the absolute right to admit both of them? It's not a discretionary issue with the judge. The, you have an absolute right, even though the statute would said, says the lower of them would be if we had blood a, alcohol level. If it had been a statute, we would, <clears throat> we would submit that they, they would First of all, it's, of course, it's not a statute, but here it would be, be the evidence. The same. Mm -hmm. As long as they are within the right. authority delegated, we view them in the same light. If the statute was written the way the regulation is, and it, the regulation is 2.57, and what that regulation says merely is that the lower number shall be taken as the defendant's blood alcohol level. It doesn't say that it, that, sh that shall only be considered or that the other one, the, the other number is not. You're saying you have an absolute right an absolute right, not subject to discretion on the judge's part based on potential confusion or anything like that, to get both results in, no matter what. Yes, Your Honors. And, and, and we would say also, I would point to the, the jury instruction cited in the Commonwealth's brief is the instruction prior to January 2009. Judge Ross, who was also the judge in the Commonwealth versus Coltori case, 408 Mass 449, um, which this court uh, reversed the judge's decision where, where he had f ordered retrograde extrapolation in all OUI cases. He is on the Committee for Criminal Proceedings that, um, that wrote the new instruction which says that a, judge, that a judge should instruct that a jury shall disregard the higher number if the judge determines that that number can come in at all. Make, but the just excuse me, to, to make absolutely clear, you have not challenged that the, that the, that the, um, the regulations are impermissible in any respect. <coughs> We have, we have not challenged that I in yeah, this proceeding because our, our position is that they can be read consistent with the statute. But Thank the, you. The, if I could just finish my, the, the thought about the, the new instruction. No, no, that's uh, a different the, point. Yeah, okay. I, I take your okay. point. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. If Pitt. there are no further questions, we address on the brief. Thank you, Ms. Pitt. Thank you. Mr. Oskern. Thank you. Good morning. May it please the Court, Barry Oskern on behalf of Mr. Steele. Um, Mr. Oskin, what is generally done in the district courts, if you know, I realize it isn't in the record, but it just might be helpful to know, it generally are both uh, results admissible or is only one? I can only speak anecdotally, having oh. prosecuted numerous OUI cases and now defending numerous OUI cases, <coughs> there has been a real sea change in how these trials have progressed. Um, Justice Ireland began by saying, well, this must come up all across the Commonwealth when the numbers differ. And in fact, speaking anecdotally and from personal experience, my experience has been that when the numbers differ, the prosecutor typically introduced the lower number only. That testimony either came in through the police officer who operated the machine, it was done orally, if the implied consent report form was introduced at evidence, it came in in a redacted form. It's only been recently that I've seen as a defense attorney these motions in limine to introduce both, both numbers. numbers. And I don't believe that Judge Ross was saying in this case, as a rule, only the number comes in. He said based on what was presented to him during the course of the argument, the motion that he was going to exercise his discretion, he felt that it would be too difficult for a jury to segregate the different tasks that the Commonwealth would ask it to do. Treat the lower number as the blood alcohol level, treat the higher number only for purposes of confirming the accuracy of the lower number, Which but then it doesn't, it, make, it doesn't make any sense. I don't understand how the higher number confirms the accuracy of the lower number. But it's, it's not the, the high, it's, it's, it's the fact that it's within 0.02. No, 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 I understand that. Right. Well. If but, the, but, but, if, but if the lower number is in evidence, the, the jury can accept that, correct? In fact, the jury, the jury is instructed, if in fact, 
let me backtrack. I read the statute in conjunction with the regulations as stating that it is only the lower number which will be presented to a jury. How do you, how do you get that out of the statute and the regulations? Because it's, the statute says that it's the individual's blood alcohol level as evidenced by either a blood test or a chemical test, a blood right. test being okay. a chemical right. test. And it's the regulations which deem that it's the lower of the two numbers. Yes, but where does the secretary, I still say, get the authority to do that? He's just, why could he could have said it's the higher number. He could have. But where does he get the authority to decide how he's going to unlevel the playing field? He, he's, he's not. The, the he, he is, is because he could have said it's the higher number. He's administering a system. He's administering a system. He could have said the higher number. He could have said a, a mix of, of the two numbers. But he's made a determination. Yes, but what, what gives him the authority to make that determination? Because, because it had to be made. Nothing says he can't. You don't have to answer. You can let them. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I'm watching a high-paced tennis match, but I, I, I was not prepared to answer that. Because they haven't, they haven't challenged the fact that he can. I mean, their argument is he can stipulate that. I mean, he can, by regulation, say that that's the blood alcohol level. That's correct. But the regulation doesn't say, oh, by the way, we can't introduce all of this other stuff. I say, okay. What's the purpose of the other stuff? You know, the, her brief says is admissible and relevant evidence. If there's already been a determination that, whatever the number is in this case, 0.0. 0.09 and 0.10. 0.09 uh, is the correct level. I, I don't understand what the 0.10 is, is relevant to. We would agree. Well, I, mean, I mean, nobody's been able to explain that to me. Okay. Now, you can go and challenge, presumably, say the regulations are beyond the scope of the delegated authority. You have to take the higher number. You have to do something else. That's not this case. Correct. Which is why I ask Ms. Pepin, did you challenge the reg as being beyond the scope of authority? No, out of the case, not at issue. In this case, are you challenging the validity of the lower number? No. Okay, if you were, let's assume that you were going to the jury and say, I don't think that that lower number is a fair and accurate reflection of my client's level of intoxication, then would it be appropriate for the second number to come in for the prosecution to show that, that the second number validates was also the accuracy of the first number? It might be. I, I could think of a case where the first number was lower than the second number. And there may be a real time lapse between the time of the arrest, say there's an accident, say we're in a remote rural part of Massachusetts where it takes time to bring the individual under arrest to a police station, have a breathalyzer. By the time, by the, let, let me backtrack. A defendant may make the claim that in fact, my blood alcohol level at the time I was driving, at the time of the accident, was actually lower. lower. Now it's going up that. because right, of absorption. It was going up over time. Right. Since okay. the Coltori and Thomas decisions, it would be incumbent upon that defendant to bring in an expert to perform a retrograde extrapolation. And it may be that the two numbers, if the first were lower than the second, the defendant. And they might be relevant in that right. case. The and, right. and so the question is whether or not the judge has discretion to exclude it or admit it, depending on a judgment about relevance in the particular That's circumstance. Correct. And, and the converse is true. It may be, let's say an individual blows a .07 and a .06, both numbers below the per se level. The police officers say, wait a minute, he appeared highly, highly intoxicated at the time I first encountered him. And based on my training as a law enforcement officer, based on the physical indicia of intoxication, I would have guessed that his blood alcohol level was much higher at the time I saw him. The Commonwealth might bring in an expert to perform a retrograde extrapolation to show that, in fact, now the numbers are dropping. Mm -hmm. The regulations allow that. The Office of Alcohol Testing, one of their duties is to provide experts to perform that. And a judge presented with that scenario <coughs> may say, yes, in this case, both numbers may come in because they're probative as to what the individual's blood alcohol concentration level was at the real time of operation. That's not the case which was presented to Judge Ross. We would submit he properly exercised his discretion, 
felt that this would be too speculative or confusing for a jury and kept the higher number out. Um, do you have any explanation of why the calibration, why the legislature put the calibration into the middle in between two tests and not at the beginning? The only thing I could think of is if there's a concern that when a subject blows into the machine, that somehow something in that, because again, they're giving two breath samples, which, which are separated by about three or four minutes. If there's something in that process that maybe would throw the machine off, prior to giving a second sample, which could be contaminated or infected in some way, having the calibration in the middle would ensure that when the machine reads a known value of solution, which has been manufactured, that in fact it's reading properly. Once the machine confirms that, then we go to the second breath sample. But that's the only explanation I could come up with. So if, if, you're, if you're right, then the new model jury instruction of the district court may not be fair, at least fair to a defendant, because there may be reasons in which that second number may be relevant. As I read the instructions, the only time that an instruction can come in with regard to a jury having heard two, two readings, two values, it's supplemental instruction number two, and the notes to it say that that instruction should be given if the judge determines first that the two readings are within 0.02, and secondly, that the judge will allow the jury evidence of both the higher and the number. So it appears, again, if the judge in his or her discretion determines this is a case where both numbers should come in. But it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a curious thing to say, I'm going to allow that second number to come in and then tell the jury to disregard it. I would agree with you. I Although I don't think that, I mean, it may not, the law requires that you disregard and consider that as the test result. If you, the two hypotheticals that you gave, you know, with, with two experts where you want, to, you want to establish what the actual blood contact was at the time of the accident, I think what this instruction is saying, um, it, is, uh, it is for you to decide if that result establishes that the debt was all greater <coughs> by the weight at the time of the operation. That's so right. all that he's saying is you've got to stick with this was the test result. You can figure out because you may have had other evidence such as there was a time delay or your example of the police officer saying based on my training and experience and the slurred speech and the da 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 da, da I think it was 08 or 09 or 10, whatever it was. So I, I'm not sure that, the, I mean, you'd, you would have to put the emphasis on test result if you, want, you know, when you're giving the instruction. That's right. And, and I guess to answer your question in general, I don't believe that this supplemental instruction really captures the scenario that we're talking about. There's, the, the district attorney makes the point that um, the numbers are already truncated. In other words, they're two-digit, 08, not 085 or 086. Is, just for my own information, is that a statutory uh, rule or a regulatory rule? I think it's a, it's a regulatory, I think. I believe it's regulatory. Okay. Um, and, and clearly, if, if the Commonwealth's concern is that by truncating the numbers that the defendant is receiving the benefit of that, I would suggest the answer would be to turn to the legislature and... Why is that the answer for truncating and not the answer for the uh, commissioner's choice as to which number to use? They're both the same issue. I, I, I guess, again, not really prepared to answer that. At, at the end of the day, what we are stuck with is the fact that the results which are printed out to three digits do get reported as two digits, and I, I don't believe that the Commonwealth has ever challenged that. I think they've pointed out that other states do it differently, um, but here in Massachusetts, we are left with two digits. Um, okay. th that's the state of the regulations. Mm -hmm. The remedy may be with the, not with the legislature, it may be with the secretary. Or with the secretary. If you have nothing further, thank you. I, I'll rest on my brief. Thank you. Mr. Oscar.